Hello there. I'm not in Las Vegas anymore. Sad. I know. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty getting reliable internet out there, as well as having the ability to charge my phone to record videos, hence why I wasn't able to film too much more while I was out there. But I wanted to film this little follow-up and close this out. I know a lot of you had uh, left some comments on the other videos. I haven't had a chance to get back to them yet, uh, to most of them, so I will do so. I was completely on my phone the whole time. I didn't have a laptop or anything, so YouTube's mobile app for uh, Android is pretty crappy as far as responding to comments. So, that's that. Uh, but I will get back to you. Um, I have a lot of thoughts that, that went through my head while I was out there, at least with respect to going to Las Vegas, being there. Um, I've only been going for about two years now. Um, my first trip was two years ago. and But since then, I've been a, a whole bunch of times. Um, and just in general, I don't want to get too far off topic, but in general, the city is, uh, is changing quite a bit. As it does, it constantly reinvents itself. Um, when I say city, I mean the strip, not necessarily the the downtown area, which is actually a very different experience. A good one, worth checking out. Um, the Strip is changing quite a bit. Um, as I had said in the video I posted about uh, shopping malls and shopping on the, on the Strip, which I apologize for the excessive noise on that one. Didn't realize how bad it was, so my apologies for that. Um, Vegas, in a lot of ways, is turning into a bit of a, a town that's, that's appealing to the lowest common denominator as far as their clientele that they're targeting. And it's not necessarily a good thing in some ways. Fortunately, it's a town that changes quite a bit and changes on its feet. So if something doesn't work, they get rid of it. They blow it up. <laughs> And knock it down, and they, they build something new. Um, but I think some of the trends that were were started in the, in the 90s into the 2000s, as far as the mega theme resort, is running dry a little bit. And now with these shopping malls popping up everywhere, I mean, full. If you've never been there, there's full-scale shopping malls at at least five, six of the major resorts on the Strip. There's one at Caesars, there's one at the Venetian, there's one at the Palazzo, uh, there's one at Planet Hollywood, there's one at... Uh, there's one going in at Bally's, uh, there's one going in at Treasure Island, and these are full, like, 7,500 stores in there, not just a couple of, you know, five or six along the side of the casino. Um, and it's just redundant. Uh, and then there's the one at the, the Crystals at city center um, you know and, and, and this applies a bit to fragrance shopping there as well is that there's really nothing different um, even the one store I found at, at the Cosmopolitan it was good but nothing terribly spectacular um, a couple of their lines were Good. But for a town that bills itself as an incredibly unique experience, something you can't get anywhere else, you would think that their retail experience would be better. And not, you know, generic. It's really the best way to describe it. It's becoming a little bit generic. So, it's the end of that rant. Um, just a couple other things to touch on. Nightclubs. I went to XS while we were there. Saw Avicii. Not a very big Avicii fan. I do like dance music. Not into the whole EDM genre. But 
It was good. Um, he was alright. Put on a pretty good show. He wasn't playing his own music. Surprisingly, um, there's a very wide range of people who go to these nightclubs in Las Vegas from all over the world. Guys, girls, it's a smattering of anybody. Um, you can run into some really famous uh, actor, sports star there. I didn't see anyone that I knew. Um, you could run into tourists from all over the country. There were people who were dancing next to us from Great Britain. Uh, there was somebody who was there from, I think, South Africa. Um, all the way to random people from the United States, from anywhere, from a city, from a small town, looking for, uh, looking for their, their Vegas experience. Fragrance-wise, I didn't smell a damn thing. I mean, I loaded up myself. Had, uh, Oud Silk Mood. Stupid name. From MFK. Which is not light by any means. I doused myself in it, thinking, gee, I'm going to a club tonight with, you know, a couple thousand other people. Not a problem. No, it was... It was a barren desert of scent. Now... That actually applied to a lot of the places that I went while I was there. Uh, be it the casinos, the casino floors, restaurants, a couple of the bars and lounges we went to. It's two things that are, that are relevant to that. Number one, if you've never been to Las Vegas, you are allowed to smoke pretty much anywhere you want. Uh, including inside, including on the casino floors lobbies. A few places do specifically uh, not allow smoking, but most do everywhere you go. You can smoke inside bars, restaurants, lounges, just about anywhere except non-smoking rooms. And the way they make it a comfortable experience for everyone, including those who don't smoke, is they constantly, in the casinos, pump air into it and suck it out. So there's constant airflow going through there, not just regular air conditioning. They pump air into it. Uh, it's also designed to keep you awake. It's one of the little tricks they do. So with that, it makes it difficult for you to smell anything because there's so much constant flow of air. So as far as wearing a fragrance goes, it's actually not a very good place to do it. You won't get much out of it. Now, the plus side of it is, if you're one of those over-sprayers out there, if you like to wear 15 sprays of stuff every day, go right ahead. You won't have any problems at all. Um, be very surprised if somebody says anything to you. Vegas still is very much an anything-goes kind of place. So if you show up at a blackjack table, you know, wearing a battered t-shirt and haven't showered in three or four days, they probably won't say anything to you. You show up there wearing a $5,000 suit and 25 sprays of Aqua de Jo, they probably won't say anything to you. You'll have some people move away from you in either one of those situations, most likely, but anything goes there. So that's the plus side of it. It's not like a lot of other American cities where wearing too much fragrance is uh, considered passe can be very off-putting to those around you there. It's kind of considered part of the mystique of it. That said, if you spray those 25 sprays of something, um, not many people will smell you. The whole time I was there, there was only one scent that I smelled that I recognized, or could really even discern as being there. I was walking through the casino floor at the Bellagio, and some guy must have been wearing Black Oud from Montal, or one of his, or one of the many clones of that. Um, that was it. The pool, the pool just reeks of sunscreen anyways. Uh, the pool, nightclubs, restaurants. Really the, the main smell was either cigarette smoke or 
something otherwise. Now, there's another component to all this, and that is some casinos do actually pump into the air their own scents. Uh, some of you who've been to Las Vegas may know what I'm talking about. There are some very distinct smells in some of these places. As I said in those two smelly casino videos, the Flamingo and Harris are disgusting. They smell like... Harris smells like old expired sunscreen. It's terrible. I hate it. I can't step foot in there for more than 30 seconds without going nuts. The Flamingo is just terrible also. Um, other resorts that are popular for doing this, the Venetian and the Palazzo Complex, they pump in this scent that smells kind of like uh, Italian oranges with some little lemongrass in there, I think. Um, it's not very strong, but when you walk in it's to these places, it's, it's noticeable. Certainly more so than in most other places you would go into. Think of it much like if you walked into an Abercrombie & Fitch store. And they spray the fierce all over the place. It's akin to that. Um, Caesars does it. They kind of have a bit of an old man smell. The one I like the best is the Wynn. Uh, there's a lot of things to like about the Wynn. They're the exception to the generic strip resort rule. Anyways. Um, but the scent they pump in there is, is very good. It's light. Fairly, it's unique. I don't, it's hard to describe. I don't remember it as vividly. We didn't stay there this time. But... It's very good. Uh, I would recommend anybody going to Vegas to at least go see the Wynn Encore Complex. It's, it's just amazing. It's a great place. Uh, and if you can stay there, definitely do so. Some of the best rooms on the Strip. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that makes it difficult for you to wear your own personal fragrance and at least be noticed. Even by yourself. It's, I stopped noticing half of what I was wearing most of the time there were so many other scents going on at the same time, be it smoke, be it the stuff they pump in, or just the general air that's all over the place. So that is that. It was an interesting little trip. Um, if anybody has any general questions about going to Las Vegas, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, now, just I don't want to stray too far from what this channel is about, but I have to, there's one place that I, every time I've been in Las Vegas since we found this place, I've been there and will continue to go to, is a bar downtown. Not on the strip, it's in the downtown section right next to the Fremont Street Experience. That, for those of us who enjoy unique fragrance experiences, creating scents and made from ingredients and things that you never thought could be in a fragrance. Um, there's a bar there that creates drinks that are on the same level, where you get things there that you never thought would be in a drink. It's called the Downtown Cocktail Room. Excellent place. The drinks are extraordinary. They do not have the ridiculously overpriced strip prices. I'm not paying 16, 17, 18 dollars for a you know, shot of Bacardi and orange juice. That'd be a disgusting drink. I don't know why I said orange juice. Either way you get the point. Um, I would highly encourage you to Google them. You can see some of their their menu they post on uh, their website, uh, and on their Facebook page. They change it out every season. But for people like some of us who enjoy creating and discovering new things from, from scent, it's another sensory experience, this time it's taste. Had a drink there that was garnished with, uh, with cheese, of all things. And it was just extraordinary. Um, great place, unpretentious. Bartenders are just 
awesome people. It's a very, it's a different experience than what you would get from a strip bar. Yeah, strip bar. And yeah, so I would highly recommend anybody going to Las Vegas, take a trip downtown, go to the downtown cocktail room. The door is a little bit interesting to find your way into, but it's not too hard. I won't tell you how to do it. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. But great place, great bartenders. That's who we go to see are Kevin and Jeff. Great people. They can make you whatever you want. Uh, anything under the sun. So, go do that. Moving forward. It's getting to be summertime. I hate the summer. Um, I'm one of the few people in the world who really doesn't like it. So, splits-wise, we'll get to some new stuff. Probably some warm weather things. I haven't decided yet. But, we'll go forward from there. Alright, so that's it for the Vegas vlog. Thank you for following along. It was an interesting experience, to say the least. And that is that. And I will see you guys soon.